Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to take a look at the NASDAQ 100 ETF, the Qs, take a look at NVIDIA, and then three big movers in terms of that came off of my ETF dashboard, the biggest movers uh, of the week. Uh, we'll take a look at those. All right, let's start off here with the Qs. So the Qs were, let's see, down, I'm looking for the percentage, down 3.4%, down 17.57 on the week. The interesting thing when I look at this weekly chart is the prior week, we closed above a 20-week high right here. So here's the 20-week high, closed above it, and now we come, we gapped up at the open this week, and we come back down, and we close below that high. That's, that's pretty negative price action to me. And, and the fact that we also closed below the midpoint of the body of that prior week. So this is going to get interesting. And when we take a look over here at the daily chart, this looks like a rising wedge to me. But this was kind of funky in that, indeed, we had a break, fake out breakout to the downside here on October 31st. You know, was, I guess it was the trick, but no treat uh, here with um, the cues. And, you know, just a few days later, we're going to the upside and doing a throw over. But the, the other interesting thing is that the breakdown and the throw over were about equal. And now we've rolled back over and seem to be breaking down again. So it's going to be interesting to see if do we finally fulfill the targeting of a rising wedge like this, which is typically back to the beginning of the wedge. Now, I don't know if it's going to go all the way down here, but I would say my first target is maybe 450 if this continues to sell off. we got to take out the October 31st low first, but it's not acting very positive. The other thing I noticed, when you look at the red line right here, this is a 20-day average volume on the Qs. So let's just go from the peak of the first rally, okay? That the 20-day uh, average volume right there is, and I'm looking down at my notes, 44 million, 44.1 million shares a day, okay? If you go up here to the high close, let's just take this day right here. It's close. It's going to be close right into this area, 30 million. This has had a 32% drop in this rising pattern in here. 32% drop in average daily volume. That's not really strong underpinnings for a bullish move. Okay, so I think that also makes us a little bit suspect. I want to drill down. Let's take a look at the 130-minute chart. So here's the other thing that's going on. Talk about whipsawing. Look at this island right here. Now I'm talking about we had a gap and then a gap over here created this island. Well, this second gap also then started this price action down in here. And the gap that occurred on the day after the election day right here, which is uh, November 6, created another island. <laughs> and you're like, OK. And that's why I titled the video Island Hopping, because we go from one to another, to another. Let me just highlight this for you. Something like this. And something like this. And something like this. And then now we got the gap back down. So really strong moves, big breakaway type of gap, a runaway type of move going on in here. But look how quickly this got closed. We came back and we've already almost completely closed that huge gap that occurred on the 6th. So the real question is, are we now going to form another type of island like this and chop around before we head back up, let's say. I don't know. I, I get, you know, we'll see what happens in here. Uh, you know, based on this price action, and actually I meant for that to just stay on the 130 minute time frame. So here's what I'm going to do right there. So that doesn't show on the daily. 
This is a pretty negative looking picture if this plays out. So we'll watch and see if that's going to happen. And if that is going to happen, we're not going to get another island here at the bottom. This is going to be it. It's going to be the island reversal at the top. So we'll see what happens there. Now, so that's the cues. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. Of course, NVIDIA is one of the you know bigger players of the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 100, and now in the Dow Industrials as of uh, November 8th. So this was down 478 on Friday and down, uh, what, $5.65 for the week. On weekly, that doesn't look super negative in terms of what it did. But when you look at it here, here we got another rising wedge type pattern. And NVIDIA had the same kind of volume drop off. If go from this high right here, look at this red line. I'll tell you what that number is. That number is 376 million shares, average 20 day volume, 376 million. You go up here, we're in the 224 million range, okay? So now we've dropped off 40% with this move to the upside. If had a 40% drop in average daily volume, again, that's not strong bullish underpinnings to me. And so now we've got this breakdown. Are we going to continue to get the follow through? We'll see. We've got, you know, definitely divergence showing up in here on a daily, on the daily chart. And uh, we'll see what kind of follow through we get. And, it, you know, I wouldn't say this is completely rolled over yet, uh, but it looks like it may be starting. All right, let's take a look at our three ETFs. I'm going to go with the one that uh, that is in third place in terms of the top three. The one was in third place because we're talking about semiconductors. Let's take a look at SMH. Well, I tell you what, let's just look at both SMH and the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. Because um, this was down, SMH was down 7.5%. The Philly Semiconductor Index was down about 10.5%. But, I mean, the picture, both pictures aren't that great. Uh, pretty big, strong move to the downside. Actually, did that close below? I'm looking at that low right here. That low is 240.28. Yeah, we closed. We literally just closed below the entire trading of the last two, four, five weeks here on SMH. And it's been two, four, six, eight weeks on the semiconductor index that we just closed below. So pretty negative picture. And you could make the case that possible large head and shoulders pattern, but you know, it's early. But anyway, here's where we are. These, these numbers right here are where they closed at the end of 2023. 174.87 and 192.03. Okay, so that's the picture with the third place ETF in terms of the biggest mover. The second place biggest mover, let me go back over here to the home page. Let me go right here. IBB, pretty negative picture. Down 671 on Friday, down $15.47 for the week. It was down. 10.4% on the week. Huge, huge move. Big collapse down five days in a row. You know, we're definitely very oversold. Huge volume, way below the Keldner channels. So, yeah, I mean, you could make the case that, yeah, we probably will get some kind of a big bounce in here. Uh, but again, diving in right now on something like this is like trying to catch a falling knife. And then the first place big mover. Let me go back up here. The Bitcoin ETF or the Bitcoin Trust, GBTC. It was up $11.76, up 19.3% on the week. Huge, huge move. And you can see here's where the halving occurred back in April. Um, I've got that noted on my charts. And then here's the daily view. Uh, I'm looking at this and thinking that we are in a fifth primary wave up in here. And we'll just watch to see how does this play out in terms of wave structure. 
Uh, Time-wise, I think we got a lot more to go uh, to the upside in here based on the past track record history of Bitcoin. So we'll see what happens. Okay, that's it for this weekend. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber channel, hit that little subscriber button. If you like more of this information, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.